Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Francois Cartoni. I'm one of the VFC developers. Uh, I would say work on Demuxers. For those who do not know what it is, it's like sorting out what gets in a video player. Uh, we talk a bit about Videoland really fast, and then uh, talk about multimedia and uh, what you want to hear about, which is next release of VSC. So the not so technical part, we are Videoland, we are Fetch and PO, we have uh, not a large amount of members, we only survive of donation and ads, and we have some dev days every day with a lot of multimedia guys. We have uh, also Bounty, we'll talk about this later. This is us uh, two years ago in Dublin. So we manage a lot of projects in open source, including encoders, uh, decryption libraries for Blu-ray, everything you might know about. So VFC, what you may know about uh, as the phone, which you have on your desktop. So uh, it was uh, first a uh, student experience on the token ring network. We were trying to play Doom. And since this is token ring network, it's not possible. So we needed a new network, but the university <coughs> disagreed. They just gave up the chance to upgrade that network if they could justify the need. So they had a satellite dish on the, on the roof, and they decided to stream video on that network. And that's how the first VHC ID went. So uh, I'll skip this one. So today, uh, we have more than 1 million downloads a day. We have more than 150 million users on every platform. We cannot count Linux, Linux users first. And we, we passed the 2 billion downloads uh, last year. We are on one of every six Macs, top Windows 15 software every, every time and on um, top ranking on most app platforms. And we just had our 15th birthday. This year, that's kidding me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are also on every platform, uh, including OS2, if you remember Ooh. that thing. <laughs> it works, and Solaris. Yeah, there's someone working on Solaris. We support almost every product. So, uh, our desktop version is currently 2.2. Uh, we only support XP. Uh, we dropped everything else. Android, uh, we no support uh, Android 6 with a new design. Uh, we are still supporting the Android 2 devices. We are also on Chrome OS because uh, we did release uh, it. The we did took the Android version and did some adaptation, fast adaptation on doing on doing the time of Chrome. So we have most playback abilities, which is also present on the Android version. We are on iOS, you might know. Also on Apple Watch. Anyone knew this? No, of course. <laughs> we are on Apple TV recently. <coughs> we did a release. Uh, we are on Winner T uh, and uh, Tizen, <laughs> which mostly looks like Android. So. <laughs> and what is coming is uh, we already have Android TV working on most of French set top boxes. Uh, we also have Fire Amazon Fire TV working. And uh, with the update of the Xbox to Windows 10, we will have uh, Xbox One working. So how do we pay everything? Well, first rule is everyone, everyone in multimedia thinks he understands everything. But in reality, no one does. Why? Uh, everyone does his own uh, cooking recipe based on supposed spec. So we have lots of, con of codecs and lots of, lots of containers are, uh, you know what is codec and containers? One, it's not a problem, no issue? Yeah. So containers, uh, almost everything is broken, of course. Uh, MP4, MKV, most okay, maybe not MP4 anyway. 
Uh, there are some really bad candidates, uh, the old AVI5, FLV, Flash, yeah, things. Ogvobis, which is uh, an open container, which is uh, which has a lot of flows. Uh, and some are designed just for under one codec, which uh, is almost useless. Okay, uh, um, yeah, so maybe I can, there is a lot of by design. Uh, content is usually bad encoded because people encode, uh, it works, but in fact it is wrong. Uh, codecs are, yeah, anyone knows what is a codec profile? Yeah, but you just uh, add some abilities to some codecs. And sometimes people add ability to codecs instead of creating a new codec. For example, for 3D, you can get better optimization, maybe, uh, we don't know. But sometimes it's wrong, and this is brings a lot of more complexity. Um, and some people are trying to fit one containers. I'll give some example. And some people also modify some codecs to fit a specific container, which is even worse. So we are in world two. Uh, if it's a stupid way to do something, then someone will do it that way. And complain it is supported until this defecto setup. So people will this broken thing and say, your player doesn't work, then your player is broken, please support it. And because usually those people are big players in the industry, then we have to support it anyway. So, codex. Okay, yeah. Maybe it's a bad joke. Yeah. Uh, we have people putting MP4 in MKV, ASF in MP4. Uh, Overbeast has some flow, you never know where. Yeah. What the granny refers to, anyway. Uh, some people are forking standards, like the MPEG standard is forked into the AWIB, Japanese AWIB organization. So it breaks uh, EIT and uh, EPG uh, and subtitles. Uh, there's some issue with some strange recording format from Microsoft. Uh, there's some AV riff, uh, which has junk section, which are supposed to be junk, but some Chinese products are using junk to put video in it. Why? No, no. Uh, there are some Panasonic things uh, which are AVC intra which are supposed to give initialization co information to those codecs to build frames and because some hardware decoders are broken someone has to remove those initialization params and put it in the hardware and then uh, you have no way instead of uh, except of building it inside your player and guessing what the parameter is there. Well, so that's a lot of example. And well, Apple is pretty bad, bad uh, at this as well. There's lots, lots of issue with the quick time things, flash, and most recently with HLS, we said it's a dirty act and we talk about it. So it's technical part, yeah, this is not, this wasn't technical. Uh, PLC is layered, uh, everything is done with plugins, which are loaded by capability. You can have an input, video output, everything. There are, lot, uh, there are priorities, and prior they use probing on the stream, on the input stream, to guess what, which format you are trying to handle. So for example, uh, this is a global layer of the chain. Uh, we, you have an access, uh, which is your raw data, which goes into the demixer, which sort things, which sends each stream to a decoder and to an up output, which even if you want to put some fighters or for audio or video. So an example with a MP4 file would, would be gzipped. Why not? Uh, you have a file access. A decompression filter. You go to an MP4 DMAX and uh, you have one MP3 stream which goes to the Linux Pulse Audio output. You have X codec which goes to the X11 video output and SPU which is uh, burnt and onto this video output. So uh, there is also packetizers which are trying to sync with the stream and uh, rebuild, uh, resync. Uh, and can handle uh, 
packet losses and everything. So technically, you can have an MP3 stream starting with ASCII, I love kittens, and you can uh, until if kitten picture and VLC can read it. <laughs> it would work. If it's, yeah. So, because we handle a lot of crap, we are shooting ourselves <coughs> in the foot, because people are testing every crap they are producing with VLC. So if something works with VLC, doesn't mean this is correct. So we arrive to what we, you want to hear. Uh, freedom beer VLC, this is free as freedom. Free as a beer and free as VLC. We will have uh, the 3.0 release soon, maybe. No. We will be the with the wax name code, which was the previous name code which has been renamed because uh, TV Pratchett died. So uh, this is uh, more than 6,000 commits, which is pretty high. Uh, we have many regressions we are working on it right now. Um, we mostly worked on the mobile releases, Android, 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 iOS, sorry. And uh, of course we are late, it was supposed to be released last year. It also will be a unified release, so you don't have to guess uh, what the Tizen uh, 00.9 is. Uh, if uh, we try to manage uh, the library version and uh, uh, the minor release in the same. So it should be VLC free everywhere. On the input side, we have a lib archive a new access which can handle any the compressed format. Uh, we have support for DVB-T2, T2, sorry. Uh, probably it's not used in Singapore. No, yeah, okay. Uh, we have support for SAT over IP. Um, probably some people are uh, watching TV with this. And we have also support for HTTP2, fine. On the voting side, we have new uh, MDNS, uh, ZeroCon, Favorite, Bonjour, uh, Discoveries. We now have network browsing working over NFS, SMBFTP. We did rewrite the UPnP module, which was quite broken. So it should now work really well. And uh, to handle all those credentials, we now have a new Keystore API, which combined to your K wallet on everything you, you are using on iOS to handle your credentials and logins. One uh, surprising thing is we will support torrent. So you could possibly play torrent directly with VLC, but uh, we will not enable it in our hour on releases, so you have to build VLC by yourself. Guess why? <laughs> Uh, new support is we have a support for WMV and MOV, which is, was a broken thing, if you remember from here. We have zero copy for GStreamer input. Yeah, we have GStreamer input support. We did fix a lot of uh, DTS audio issue we had, uh, and we have better channels reordering uh, and larger number of channels. On the blue side, we did really improve the thing, uh, especially for uh, the Java BD thing uh, through our library. Uh, we have support for embedded subtitles and fonts. Uh, that works uh, really well. We have support for uh, Japanese free to view uh, with also a decryption library. So you just have if you are in Japan, you just plug in your uh, own uh, uh, BKS card and you can watch the free streams and uh, even record if you want. And uh, we have support for the one seg, which is lower quality, but well, uh, it works everywhere now in Japan if you have a, um, a regular ISDBT adapter or a mobile adapter. On the new codecs, uh, mostly professional codecs or meeting codecs, we have TDSC support, Canopus, HQX, Goto meeting codecs, uh, support for VP9, the Google codec, which is quite interesting, and uh, 
mostly professional uh, JPEG to present uh, over TS. Yeah. Supposedly we have support because we didn't find any sample, so I wasn't able to test, but it should be correct according to the spec. But as mentioned before, someone might have did implement the spec very well, so we'll see. And DALA is coming again, uh, also. This is DALA, for those knowing DALA or not, this is uh, the really next generation codec, which will come after HEVC, which is targeting to be the best codecs ever for its generation. Uh, for those who know Opus, uh, it is uh, the same guys doing that job, so this is quite... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Uh, on the current codec, which are H264 and HEVC, HEVC, which is a 4K codec and a high performance codec, uh, we have better support for raw streams. Um, we have improved, improved packetizers. Uh, we have ARM optimization, yeah, because we focus on module or mobile. We have uh, ASM optimization for those things as well. And we did introduce asynchronous decoding because uh, one issue we had with mobile port is that other mobile applications had better performance than, than us. Uh, just because of hardware decoding, uh, VSC wasn't designed uh, to do hardware decoding at first. So we had issue and we had to rewrite the way to do asynchronous decoding. So now, if you try uh, any mobile version of uh, VLC, we fill the gap with any other competitor, and we should ship the same performance when you are doing hardware decoding. And those on Windows platform might, hi might have experienced the awful rebuilding phone cage on start. And we finally got rid of this crap. So, on the Demuxer side, uh, the regular MPTS have been uh, reworked most totally. Uh, so we can add a lot, lot, lot of broken things like uh, uh, encrypted programs and free programs, uh, selection automatically or not. Uh, PMT path, yeah, means nothing probably for you. Uh, we also did split uh, the MPEG-TS uh, to be able to handle uh, multiple standards because we were French guys so only targeting the French standards. So now we are able to handle the American standards and the Japanese standard, and maybe the Brazilian standard soon, working on it. We have support for the Korean standards as well, which is uh, done uh, through MPEG-4 SL. Someone from the IETF uh, joined uh, us uh, recently and is working on doing MKV optimization. He's working on C++, he's really tempted. So you should gain a lot of performance. We have also support for fragmented MP4 Muxer, which will be used in the next slide. Uh, also support for DVD audio, anyone knows what it is? Remember what DVD audio was? Well, that was audio, high quality audio for DVD. We have support right now, so if you still have one, it might work. We have support for HD DVD, which is also a date standard. Uh, special evil things. Creative work, if you remember the f Sound Blaster format, or so really old formats. I did fix both things and also the really, really old ADPCM codecs on two bits. They are really crappy audio because we had really, really lot uh, lack of space at that time. So it was really, really highly compressed in a bad way. But now it works. On the output, we have uh, DirectX3D 11 on Windows. We have a new Wayland video output. We dropped the... X Wayland video output, how are you doing that? Uh, yeah, that's basic so fast. I, I don't remember. It's not my part. Uh, maybe I can ask for you. So I'm just wondering if you have an interface in Lubil C where we basically get DRM buffers. I don't know. So, yeah. Lubil, so whatever I, I, I have to dive into it. Yeah, yeah this okay. is not my part. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, Android, uh, uh, the OpenGL module is not by default. Uh, it was buggy, no, it was fine, so we gained some performance. The Android the track has been rewired for audio, uh, so we fixed the latency issues. Uh, the video surfaces also have been improved, uh, and we have support for Tizen. If, uh, uh, on the hardware acceleration, we have direct 3D11, of course. Uh, we have uh, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. VLC runs sounds Raspberry Pi with hardware decoding. We are really useful. HVC up to 4K on full hardware decoding. Probably only on the N NVIDIA 9960 cards from those ones. Android uh, OMX, and we did fix a lot of things in. Samsung Media Codec, <laughs> which was really, really, really broken. And Windows uh, DXVA2. Uh, we will provide support from Chromecast. You will be able to stream to directly to Chromecast. Uh, it might involve transcoding. Uh, it works right now. Uh, we're still working on it, but basically it should work more or less. Chromecast wasn't designed to do this, so it is a hack to have the Chromecast fetch the streams you are transcoding from VLC, which acts as a web server. Uh, it works. Uh, on the subtitle of the subtitles side, uh, we did rework the rendering, styling things. Everything should be correct. We have a new TTML module, which works also really well. We have the Japanese uh, uh, standard, uh, which, which also have been worked. Uh, uh, we have uh, closed, closed caption fixes for a uh, really, really odd issue we had. Uh, creative caption also support in uh, various uh, mux formats. And the YouTube SBV format you have uh, on some YouTube video this is basically uh, just TTML uh, in a different format, but anyway. So a Syrian guy uh, sent us half bus fixes. So now if you have a really complex language uh, and had issue displaying characters, uh, everything works. We also have font fallback where you, when your font didn't have the expected character it was just displaying a square or any junk. No, it should work also correctly. And on the Windows and OX version, version, sorry, we also have a text-to-speech output for accessibility. So uh, on the <coughs> adaptive streaming, do I still have time? more minutes. Yeah, uh, for those not knowing what adaptive streaming is, is when you are watching video, it starts with bad quality and it improves with your bandwidth. So it's just providing alternative on bitrate content, supposed to save bandwidth and improve user experience. Uh, mostly used for live. Uh, there is many formats like the Microsoft Smooth Streaming, uh, which uh, it's basically uh, an XML and fragmented MP4 strip with strip in its params. Yeah, it's not really interesting. Uh, one is fully standardized, which is Dash, uh, XML based. Uh, yeah. And the Apple one, which is HLS, uh, which uh, anyone knows what is uh, the MP3U playlist? So this is just a playlist, and HLS took a playlist to make uh, it a, a basis for its adaptive streaming formats. So if they are releasing a new format every six months, before this is just a pile of hacks. Uh, they are trying to do what every other form of standards is doing. So this is really, really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. Uh, I did work a lot of this. Um, um, unfortunately, this is used by most uh, streaming company, uh, but uh, in the latest VLC version, it works well, and on the 3.0, it works perfectly. And uh, we have also Adobe HDS format. So 
probably skip this, sorry. Uh, we have a content which are you know, on multiple formats. So if there is a content in a single container format uh, where you can switch quality, you can just append segments and uh, our demoxer will handle this. But in the other case, we have to work around. So we had to uh, make black boxes around our demoxers and do uh, output stream remapping uh, in case of quality change or format change uh, with this was really tedious uh, so we are not able to handle quality change over different formats and yeah this is really complex yeah I'm finishing so finally we had many broken module doing adaptative before and now we have a single adaptative module which does everything because the dash standards allow us to remap every other format into a dash subspec and uh, everything works well uh, if you're interested you can contribute we have mailing list if you want to contribute with uh, some uh, uh, money uh, we have bounties we have some tasks on our wiki if you are uh, wanting to, to work on it, please tell us. If you can succeed working on it, we will pay. Uh, and we have the also the Summer of Code. Uh, we have, I think, four or few projects on this. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, maybe it was a bit technical, yeah. but I believe you got most the, la the lines uh, of that talk. I think we have time for like one question. Think. Yeah. If you have one question, I can give you some VLC chocolate, which is limited edition. <laughs> <laughs> question? No? Anyone? I have a kind of a question. Recently, by a computer with Windows 10, and we cannot run VLC on it. And uh, there is a version on Windows. Windows says works. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work. It, it has none of the features. Is, is it the, 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 the supposed to be in the Windows Store? We are on the Windows Store, yeah? Yeah, and then the, 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 that, that VLC is completely different than the normal VLC. Yeah, uh, VLC is a library. There is live VLC, which under mostly of the features I've been talking about. And then you have the UIs. And the Windows 10 UI is different because this is a different platform, this is a different language. The Android UI is different, the iOS UI is different. Uh, sometimes there's difference in capabilities because UI brings some uh, iOS things, fingerprint or browsing, I don't know. So that's mostly the reason. But for VSC 4, we, have, we are planning to unify the UIs, um, so you might get uh, something like Windows 10 UI on your Linux desktop. No, <laughs> I know, but the Linux UI currently is really old. Uh, and probably we should have it, yeah. Did you use the Tizen Yes, Tizen doesn't really work well right now. <laughs> but it, it, the same EFL was on, on Linux anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, my try. And actually, it runs on Windows as well. I don't want to Mac OS. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so if you guys want to discuss more, maybe you can discuss it. Yeah, outside. please.